Leslie, like, I've always been fascinated when actors are called back to shoot additional footage for films, or maybe even change an ending to a film. Mm -hmm. How often has that happened to you? You know, that's actually never happened to me that I can recall. Uh, I've been in films where that has occurred, like this one, for instance. But um, I personally have not had to come back and reshoot an ending or changed an ending, yeah. Okay. Now with uh, the movie Clue, that had an unusual circumstance yeah. in that it was scripted to have four different endings yeah, originally. Four. Mm -hmm. Now was that a little bizarre for you to do? Yeah, very. Yeah, we had to, it was actually sort of fun. I mean, we, we, you know, we got to each be the killer, you know, and, and, and shoot the ending around that concept. And, and, and it was sort of fun. You know, I enjoyed it because we, you, you know, and you had to drop everything you knew and become this other, you know, take on this other story. It was interesting. I interviewed Mel Brooks um, last year, and we were talking about Life Stinks. Uh -huh. And he said even though the film wasn't that successful in the States, it did very well in foreign markets. Yes, it did. Do you think that the ball was dropped somewhat when it was marketed here, or why do you think that was? You know, I really don't know. I mean, I'm not sure whether it was marketed correctly, maybe, for the style of the piece, or whether the issue of homelessness is one that didn't want to be treated with Mel's kind of take on it, you know. I really don't know why, um, but it was one of the best experiences I've had. I adore that man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, let's turn to uh, Victor Victoria. Uh -huh. When you did that film, were you worried whether people would, the, the whole cross-dressing thing and all that, whether that might be a touchy thing to sell to people, or did you think right away this movie's going to be a hit? No, I had no concept, and I certainly had no concept about getting an Academy Award nomination. I mean, I was, I remember actually calling my publicist at the time from London and saying, you know, I'm doing this really interesting little film, and I'm making all these sort of bizarre choices, and I think it's working, and you know, I had no clue, no clue that it was going to be a, such a, you know, a huge turning point in my career. And now I have a couple of questions about the Oscars, because yeah. everyone's asked about, you know, when you win, you, you get the statue. When you don't win, what kind of collectibles or mementos do you keep from the ceremonies? Your memories, you know. I mean, it was interesting. The year that I didn't win, Dustin Hoffman didn't win, and Sidney Pollack didn't win. So I felt like, you know, okay, those guys can, you know, they're geniuses. It's not, it's not such a bad thing. It was an extraordinary experience for me, and it was, uh, you know, so it was almost out of body. It was so exciting. Um, you know, it, it seems a very surreal thing to be driving up in a limo and going down that walkway. It is surreal. You know, how did you feel as the limo approached before you disembarked? You know, I was so frightened. And frightened of what? That's what's interesting, you know, because I'd already been nominated, you know, but I was so excited. I, I, you know, I can only imagine that it's like, a, you know, a little child at their first huge birthday party or something. It was so overwhelmingly exciting and scary, you know, having all that attention. Uh, I'm not someone who enjoys a lot of attention in private life like that, you know. And immediately afterwards, when everything broke and the parties began, did you feel a sense of relief that it was over, disappointment? How, how are your emotions? Oh, I was, you know, really disappointed that I didn't win. Um, but I was still in sort of an, an exhilarated place, you know, and to be a member of that sort of inner circle, you know, was, was really something. Um, and I was, you know, I was still, there was a lot of, you know, exciting events to go to, and it was all, it was, it was a thrilling night all in all. Okay. Well, turning to Color of Night, I know every film, uh, the costume, uh, the costume fittings are probably a little bit different. How was this one when you saw what they wanted you to wear? <laughs> I was dying. You know, at first, it was interesting. At first, I was very, I was gleeful. I thought, this is perfect. It's so, you know, outrageous, and I'm going to, you know, love it. But as I had to inhabit those clothes on a daily basis, I found myself feeling kind of resentful and angry and, you know, s foolish, you know. Um, but then I went through another transition where I realized that all the, you know, that was, it was really right for Sandra to look like that, you know, that she is someone who depends on, you know, a blaring signal of sexuality for attention. And, um, 
So, you know, I, I eventually, the clothes helped me in my characterization tremendously. I know you've, you've played uh, blondes before. Uh, but seeing yourself in this film as a blonde, did you detect a difference in the way people reacted to you? People loved me as blonde on the set. It was really kind of weird. I mean, I never got used to it, but although what happened to me immediately afterwards, um, when I, you know, took the wig off and the movie was finished, I went to my hairdresser and I said, don't you think my hair is kind of dark? Don't you think we should put some gold in it, you know? And he said, really? And I said, yeah, let's put some gold in it and put some gold in it. I wasn't happy. But I had gotten so used to seeing myself with this, with this blonde hair. And yes, it did, it, did, uh, it, it did bring out a different kind of behavior from people. Yeah. They do treat blondes differently. Well, and I have one final question. When the movie White Palace came out mm -hmm. uh, a while back, it got a lot of publicity about the, the older woman, younger man mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I couldn't help but think of A Night in Heaven, which is yes. a film you did. Yes. And that movie, it had a lot of very talented people involved with it. Yes, it did. But did you get a sense that it misfired somehow? or uh -huh. okay, What do you think the problem was with well, that movie? Well, I, I, I think some of the casting wasn't very good. And um, you know, without naming names, I just think that some of the casting wasn't wasn't strong enough, and uh, it could have been, you know, it could have been a forerunner, certainly to White Pass, uh, White Castle, um, but it had an Academy Award-winning director and producer and writer, and you know, and sometimes that happens, you know.